Hello there, good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I feel absolutely privileged, happy to be part of these sessions, and the joy that we get here meditating the Word of God uh, is uncomparable. Yeah. You may compare it with anything else, glorious moments, wonderful moments, successful events, yeah, miraculous events. All these things are like a passing cloud, you know. Until when you have that happiness. It's not joy, yeah? happiness. Until the next problem arrives and crosses your path. Yeah, the happiness sustains. But the moment you encounter a different problem, yeah, your your your, your happiness is gone. But in the midst of problems or happiness or uh, successful events or troubles or anything, you seem to have the joy of the Lord in your heart. Yeah? And uh, that's exactly the uh, fruit. Uh, I mean, the flavor of the fruit is uh, joy, love, peace. It starts with joy. Because if you lose that joy, it's an entry point for everything else. Everything else in the sense, the unclean spirits, the evil spirits are able to easily conquer us, easily defeat us, easily lead us to depravity, lead us to deception, all sorts of things. Follows easily. So that's why Bible consistently reminds us to stay in the word of God. Right? And the word of God is your spiritual weapon and my spiritual weapon, the armor of God, the helmet of salvation that preserves our consistency yeah with the i mean consistency in this walk that we have uh, with god you know our association with god consistency in this association with god anything you can say right now what preserves that consistency is the word of god the more you are connected in the word of god the more you walk in diligence the more you walk in wisdom the more you walk in light the more you walk in being very very careful looking around you 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 don't uh, step into complacency or self complacency yeah you definitely don't uh, get into any sorts of unnecessary controversies inviting problems you don't get into any sorts of new habits without consulting the holy spirit all this changes inside of you takes place spontaneously without an effort it's effortless most of the times so you know that that's why you got to put that effort to connect and stay connected in the word of God and have that association. Keep checking whether the Holy Spirit is still dwelling in you or not. Many people walk in assumption. I took water baptism, therefore Holy Spirit is with me. Who told you? Probably he was on that day with you. Probably the next day, perhaps he left you. Why? Because you took away your focus. In fact, you never pressed yourself hard uh, reading the word of God. And most of the people who are listening to me, who are listening to me, never step into water baptism before you have understood Bible. Read Bible at least once and have a basic understanding of what is the word of God. What kind of spiritual warfare you will have to encounter. Walking in the spiritual path is not easy, but I'm not saying it's impossible. Why? Because Bible says with men it is impossible. What kind of men? Who looks around the world, who looks at this pastor, that elder and this believer. Uh, if they are able to walk, I will also walk. Not like that. That's called as, you know, being complacent. Almost, you know, persuaded in assumptions that when they are walking, I can also walk. You look, you research their life properly, right? They, they would be really, really staying uh, strong in the word of God. And that's the reason they are able to walk. So listen to their testimonies. Ask them the reason how they are able to, very, uh, how they are very consistent in life. And learn from them. Yeah, I'm not saying you shouldn't have any role model. But the biggest role model and the wonderful role model you and I have are two people in the Bible that I always go to. One is Jesus Christ, my Lord, and Paul the Apostle, who followed the footprints, imitate me as I imitated Christ. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, he says that. Yeah, anything I need, I go to Jesus. If I don't get there, I go to Paul. <laughs> it's pretty much covered. 14 plus 4, 18 books. Pretty much answers every single question that you have uh, in the world. Questions related to sickness, poverty, um, curses, bondage, demonic uh, battle, spiritual warfare, anything. How to handle emotions, how to handle marriage, law of marriage, beautifully described in the book of 1 Corinthians 10. What more do you need? 
and they also lead you towards the old covenant also they say without old covenant there is no new covenant old covenant is not abolished jesus said that i came to fulfill but not abolish and then extend it to the next level refine it enrich it with a lot of new principles and standards and doctrines therefore it's easy for you and i to lead the spiritual life without much difficulties how many of you are with me yeah because old covenant people never had messiah messiah made our life even more easier many people think this way ha oh, old covenant had 613 laws and commandments new covenant it doubled up 1050 what is this yeah sometimes when the laws are refined it's going to you don't don't look at the quantity look at the quality right right it's not about quantifying something it's about qualitatively looking at things yeah it's broken down into multiple laws therefore you definitely have better ways and better means and uh, new covenant's style of fixing things is inside not externalized it's internalized right when if when inward things are fixed outward things will fall in place but all covenant is full of outward things traditional right to go to the temple of god with bull and uh, you know slay it and take this and put there and take the fat and burn it and all that and on the way itself they will sin again <laughs> whereas here jesus himself laid his body as sin offering once for all no animal's blood can cleanse us and redeem us and deliver us from all sorts of bondages or sinful deeds jesus blood is able to only cleanse why because it's a blood of purity sanctified blood blood that is pure and holy and blood not begotten of a man you know man uh, man's chromosome and uh, the female sex when they meet uh, right the baby is formed it's not like that right he's formed of the holy spirit is conceived of the holy spirit virgin mary she never knew a man well until jesus was born after jesus was born yes mary and joseph had many children yep agreed all right a warm welcome to this series and what i was trying to say is simple tense condensed format read the bible regularly consistently and slowly come on let's repeat it all of you repeat it after me read the bible regularly read the bible slowly read the bible consistently or i changed the order read the bible regularly read the bible consistently read the bible slowly and carefully you add the any more leaves you want but all the time saying is read the bible okay don't rush and read consistency regularly is no different from consistency uh, consistency but the pattern in which you read the bible you got to be consistent some day you don't rush in you can't read bible because if you you're getting late to office don't read come back home and read it's okay if you skip one day also don't you know read this book as a traditional book my duty to read no 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 my responsibility to read no 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 rather you should say it's an advantage to read it's a, it's beneficial for me to read why because i'm going to benefit a lot in reading bible it's like an appetite spiritual appetite you skip a meal you feel especially diabetic pe uh, folks you know listening to me you skip a meal you really feel dizzy and all that some level of sugar uh, you know drops and sugar level drops and you feel dizzy and low sugar and all that you faint similarly a day you don't read bible your spiritual appetite is wobbling and therefore you will manufacture time yeah i can't think of a reason see you are unless sick and infected of covid and all that you know january we also in this year january we also i also i think i got covid i never went for a test but all the symptoms they were saying i had it i think i got omicron but i still call it as viral fever it's okay god permitted i suffered like anything suffered four days or five days just couldn't do anything at all and after that to fully recover it took me one and a half months or something like that yet we never suspended our preaching and teaching of bible we continued but not for those five days i was literally lying down not I just could not do anything man i was just breathing and lying down not yet dead <laughs> God will never allow me to be dead before he accomplishes all his will divine plans or executed through my life before which God never will take me I know for sure how do you know that the divine will of God is not it accomplished I know God discussed with me I discussed with God and he told me these are the plans I have for you and how can he take my life so quickly so it's not easy it's not easy for the devil to you know reduce my life span before god accomplishes what he had predestined for me such should be your confidence too my dear brother sister 
listening to me. Huh? Don't be paranoid all the time. Don't panic all the time. The devil cannot even near your shadow. He cannot even touch the tip of your hair. Why? Because every hair that falls down requires God's permission according to Luke 12, 7. He had counted the number of hairs in your head, very head, Bible says. How, is, how much more precious is your life? Huh? Divine will plan that he had predestined. Even before the foundations of the world, God sat down and he programmatically organized everything. You know, until the last baby that's going to be born just before Revelation 2010. You all agree with me? Until Revelation 29, babies are going to be born. Even during the thousand years of Jerusalem reign, uh, you know, babies are going to be born. God knows even that last baby's name. Who is that lucky baby? I don't know. Why? Because the moment the baby is born straight to heaven, it doesn't have to live the life, no? <laughs> and the white throne judgment will begin. <laughs> anyway, I was just joking. All right. <laughs> so many of you, many of you haven't thought about this, isn't it? I, I used to think a lot about these things. <laughs> it's not my imagination, beloved. It's about you know reading the Bible with lots of not not flavor, not camouflaging, not um, exaggerating, but then. Uh, yeah, imagination is the right word. You got to imagine. You got to step into the shoes of that personality, and a lot of other thoughts will overwhelm in your mind. You will find answers. You will reason, and the Holy Spirit will supply you with answers. And why these are very important? That provisions that helps you to lead that, you know, spirit-filled life on earth. You need to find answers before the problem. It's many people, many. I ate out of friend people. They will tend to find an answer only when the problem. If without a problem, why I should find a solution? Something like that, you know. No. You need to anticipate. Yeah. Preventive measure is different from corrective measure. Preventive measure is always good. Prevention is better than cure. Correct? No. What is a preventive measure? You should anticipate. Corrective measure, once the problem hits, then I go towards the course correction and uh, then I run around and all that, yeah, which every human being will, or heathen will do, which every illiterate also will do. You don't need education also. Everyone knows how to. Suddenly, you know, the flood water enters into your house. You will not sit and watch, you know, what a great flood water. Huh? It's so muddy. It's stinking and all that. Oh, it smells so nice. You won't say that. Even even an, anyone, anyone, even the animals would run away for its life. So... It's corrective measure is what a person who had no who will have no Bible knowledge will take that pathway. But a person like you and me, spiritual life, we have to always fall in the side of preventive measure. All right. A warm welcome to this series, Groups of Evil Spirits that Deceive the Mankind. Categorically, we have discussed we had been discussing for a very long time. This is episode number eight. The previous episodes we have touched upon various other categories, such as the deep sleep spirits, tormenting spirits unclean spirits, foul spirits, familiar spirits, so many spirits, you know, they divide and conquer the mankind, they divide and fight with the mankind, therefore an enemy deployed in the front, you're busy fighting, an enemy from the back comes and, you know, kills you, shooting, a bow, shooting an arrow from above, you understand what I'm saying? Or some of you turn and attack him, but how about the sides, you know, some other spirits comes and attack you, therefore, Bible also supplies us with a lot of spiritual weapons, a lot of advices, directives, norms, rules, regulations, laws, commandments. All these are being given. Therefore, Bible helps you to you know, come out as a strong warrior, a prayer warrior, a spiritual warrior to fight the wiles of the devil. And God understands our flesh is weak. Therefore, the angels are going to be deployed who would fight for us. Do not worry. But... They are waiting for your command and my command from the promises of God. You can't say, angel, go and fight. No, he won't fight. Promises of God, as it is written in the Bible, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. And the angels will come and protect me. Therefore, my foot will not dash against a stone. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command, uh, angels, come down and fight this battle for me. And the angels are going to help you. Or in the morning, you dedicate your family, your life and your day in the hands of God the Father, in the name of Jesus, immediately protection becomes your portion. You know that? And you need help from the heavens. And heaven always deploys help and helping agents. I'm talking about angels. Huh? And not only that, right advices. You are really confused, don't know what to decide. Holy Spirit is there to guide you. Again from the scriptures, he is going to bring to your remembrance all that Jesus spoke and taught. John 14, 26. 
and the trinity lives right inside of us not only the holy spirit father in heaven and the son of god john 14:23 many people don't read these verses careful enough now in a previous session couple of sessions we are stuck with the one uh, second peter chapter 2 uh, verses 11 to 22 and we are done from 11 to 17 talking about the last days deceptions talking about the last days deception which will make uh, uh, what is a false prophets and false teachers evolve in phenomenal numbers yeah it's it's even very tough to imagine what could the number look like yes there are going to be so many false teachers cult speakers false prophets who are going to evolve in thriving numbers and therefore it's very tough for any believer in christ to resist why because some of they discover this guy is a cult speaker they go to another church there they find a false prophet they go to another church there and they find another false teacher there and they go to another church again the cycle continues another cult speaker and all that i'm not saying all churches are corrupt no there are few churches which are not yet corrupt yeah but they are almost in the verge of uh, corruption am i saying the nominal christians are bad and pentecostal christians are good no sorry i'm not here to discriminate it's like racism right no sorry i'm not saying that sometimes pastor is good but the entire community the believer community is completely bunch of wolves and thieves it happens right therefore you need to watch out because temptation can come in any form through anyone through any source therefore you and i have that important responsibility to watch and pray lest you may enter into temptation pray about everything when you go to work pray about it may this day be a day Uh, you know which will help me to resist the devil and he will flee away from me james 4 7 make a way for me to escape o lord temptations may come against me you may permit certain things but may the victory be mine in the name of jesus i pray 1 corinthians 15 57 1 corinthians 10 13 you think what will happen that day victory is yours and <laughs> that promise of god will do its job god the father already gave us the promises he doesn't have to add anything or decrement it's all there the word is life the word is might you speak the promise of god the word will accomplish its purpose and meaning it shall not return back to you and me void void means what the word will not come back and say hey i tried man but i could not fulfill no god the father says in my name yeah i i swear in my name god the father says that i swear in my name and i write it uh, you know you can test me whether these words are real or not you can test me but have faith through the trust and faith you have in me you can test me you can test my spirit you're welcome god the father says so in the last days you will find lot of deceiving spirits moving across and they are more so overwhelming in the midst of christendom you look around the world the world is already on the side of deception 99% of the world is already on the deception but i'm talking about 1% of pure christians yeah and people who are in deception already also when you're listening to me you check on yourselves and help you which will help you to discover which will help you to fix the problem before you discover how can you fix the problem until you discover you don't know what to fix because according to you all is well but it's not the truth and that's the reason we are helping you how to discover we give you the checklist a lot of checklists in the bible colossians uh, chapter 3 verses 12 to 17 what must be the mark of a christian what must be the what must be the behavior of a christian romans chapter 12 verses 12 to 21 i think you read and see and not only that there are a lot of spiritual tests that the uh, that that the that, that, that disciple john had written down in 1 john chapter 2 whole chapter you read yeah is there any truth in you are you on the side of the deception are you what is your spiritual status yeah do you love the world or you do do, do you love the lord all these things you will be able to find out and now if that is not enough take and read ephesians 5 full chapter walking in light walking in diligence walking in wisdom are you married to christ or are you married to bunch of evil spirits you will be able to discover and like this we are explaining for a very long time this is lesson number 46 and we are going to continue our discussion from second peter uh, chapter 2 and verses 18 to 22 will be our meditation verse today we will try to close deceptions of false teachers how how do you discover a person who speaks to you or preaches the word of god is a false teacher or not paul uh, sorry peter saint peter had got something to say here for when they speak great swelling words of emptiness ah paradoxical statement no 
or oxymoronic statement ha huh? one side you say great swelling words meaning what long prayers bragging about their ministries bragging about the wonders that god had done in their lives blah 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 but bible calls these are empty words empty conversations empty dumpty hmm? why it is empty hey your boss should be in the lord and you need not have long prayers matthew chapter 6 verse 5 jesus himself told if you are a hypocrite you will blow, blow your trumpet standing at the corner of the streets you know what the pharisees will do they will pick up market places crowdy places this and that and they will be they, they are very good in memorizing the scriptures they know all the 613 commandments by heart they know all the five books of torah torah by heart upside down and they will be kind of reciting everything and it's like you know recitation exercise loudly they will be praying or uh, reciting the bible or reciting the memorable uh, verses they remember and all that the people who ever cross by oh look at this pastor how well he is talking and see he is not even looking at any notes or whatever without even looking at the bible he is reading uh, sorry he is reciting the bible so very clearly and all that huh? your boss is in the lord no you are doing it for your own uh, uh, you know pe- to get people's attention on you that's it for your own popularity and like where some people you ask them to pray my goodness they pray 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 people will be standing and then they will sit and then they will lie down and sleep off even then also the prayer is not over you don't have to do so much right speak from the word of god to the situation to the circumstance and uh, let your prayer be short enough that's enough they allure through the lusts of the flesh yeah what is the lust of their flesh they want popularity they want to be more fam- famous fame more even more popular than christ even more popular than paul the apostle there are a lot of people here in bangalore they call themselves as apostles really and driving some of their uh, you know uh, what to say some of their posh and um, uh, posh cars like uh, you know audis and benzes and all that and they travel in jet and business class and they always stay in five star hotels and all these things and they call themselves as apostles do you deserve absolutely no who is the qualified christian we discussed about that uh, from a different uh, episode right who must be called as a qualified christian in our previous uh, sessions we discussed isn't it so like that who must be the qualified teacher there are certain norms being given here right and people listening to me listen carefully uh, you are going to be judged based on what you are listening to me now right and if you don't follow these standards then you have a big problem in the white throne judgment you are going to be judged by your own standards god is going to catch you your craftiness will be revealed and god is not going to let you go because he is just god he is not god of partiality and he judges everyone fairly from the word of god you know who is in the more dangerous position people like you and me who know the bible and you do anything wrong no sorry not acceptable a person who at least is not aware of the bible um, of course no one can say that i am not aware of bible jesus and christianity <laughs> christianity and bible and jesus all are available pretty much in splendid measures across the world and a person ignored made a choice to ignore the bible he is also going to be equally judged and justified what made you to you know ignore the bible so compared to them we are in a much more dangerous position right and through the lust of the flesh through the licentiousness yeah saying whatever they say is right everyone else's theory is wrong to what extent they will be preaching and teaching us even what jesus said is not something like this but it is uh, not something like this but similar to this and all that they will be comparing comparing and they will be confusing everyone and they will put everyone to death spiritually they will all be dead all their followers okay all right so the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error there are many people who consistently live in error and uh, yet they keep justifying that what they are doing is right how do you handle such people this is called as living in blasphemy this is called as living in hypocrisy this is called as living in blindfold state and who can even god cannot save you my brother sister listening to me yeah that's where you need to make a choice today 
that's where you need to make a decision today that not saying that you shouldn't listen to anyone but then test their spirits 1 Thessalonians 5 1 Thessalonians 5 21 to 23 says that test the spirit and abstain from every form of evil deeds yeah verse number 19 while they promise them liberty they themselves are slaves of corruption don't you think so this is the state of many many teachers and their followers too Hey, if your teacher is in corruption, if your teacher is imprisoned, if your teacher is slavery of pornography and all that, uh, what would be the state of their followers? That's why it's very important to test the spirit and what kind of, you know, preaching and teaching you listen. Some churches always speak about, you know, give more, give more, give more. They go, don't give an account of uh, the money that is being collected and spent. One congregation that I know they, that religiously reports the money being spent is CSA congregation, yeah, I've been there. There are few Pentecost churches where they display what is the need and the money and they also give details. You can directly pay your bills to so-and-so agency and let them deliver the materials and may the work be done. Very nice. Why are you not exposing corruption? And uh, some people are supernatural, you know. May the power of God heal you and all that they themselves will be in bondages. That's why you need to learn to walk in spirit and you're able to discern. And the Holy Spirit will clearly lead you from the scriptures why this person is in corruption. Yeah. Many, many examples and testimonies, personal testimonies I will be able to disclose. But that's unnecessary. Why? Because it's very clear. Yeah. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Some people pray over the sickness, they don't get healed. Yeah, You should definitely go to the guy and report in front of all the people. Yeah, You prayed over me, being the elder, and you said miracle will take place, etc. Nothing happened. Come on, pray, to pray, pray over me again and don't leave him. Put them to shame. Why? Because he claims that he's a miracle worker or he's the servant of God who has been granted that healing gift and all that. Where is that gone? You are a false prophet, man. Put such people to shame. Don't be shy to do that. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. Yeah, People who follow him or such, people, such leaders of the church when you are the follower, you will also end up in bondage. Yeah, This is an awareness session, right? You got to be aware. And people who are nom nominal Christians listening to me, hey, if you are in uh, the Roman Catholic churches, and if you are in the Roman Catholic traditions, we love you. We really love you. But you need some, you know, deliverance. Because why? You compare it with the Bible, you will find 100% mismatch, whatever they do there. They give little place to Jesus. No, Jesus holds dominance. St. Peter, St. Mary, uh, who are all the other saints? St. Augustine. And uh, St. Anthony, oh my goodness, I've been there. St. Anthony's Church, Tuesdays. Mother Mary Church, Thursday and Saturday. Friday, a little place to Jesus. Especially Lent days, way, way, you know, what, way to the cross. Or way off the cross or way to the cross, I do not know. Friday evenings, Lent days. I've been there. Sundays, yes, it's major, majorly Mary, but a little bit of Jesus. What is this? Where is it in the Bible? If you're following such uh, preachings and teachings which has nothing to do with the Bible, then what are you? You are in deception, man. You can't change the, you know, the traditional practices that are happening for generations, but you can get out of such places and find a church which leads you in the word of God. I'm not saying Pentecost is better than CSI. CSI is better than Catholic. Catholic is the worst. No. Did I make any comments like that? No. Whichever church or congregation or the leader of the church or the prophet or so-called teachers or oh, they have to their teachings the way how they lead you must match with the word of God that's all that's the only norm we are trying to set here did I say anything else no I did not verse number 20 second Peter 2 20 uh, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Pollution means not the smoke and uh, yeah, air pollution. <laughs> pollution means corruption, uh, uh, misconception, deception, delusion, all lessons <laughs> being instilled on 
the mankind from the bottomless pit yeah you escaped through the knowledge of the lord and savior jesus christ they are again entangled in them and overcome the later end is worse for them than the beginning what is this once a sinner baptized freedom from all the sinful deeds liberalized once again slowly getting into the sinful deeds of the past little bit of adult movies then little bit of prostitution or more of flirting and all that you you define your own rules i used to uh, you know flirt around with the people nowadays i'm watching only little bit of adult movies what is this have you got little bit of common sense yeah yummy food right in front of you only one drop of poison that's all food is so yummy and the quantity of the food is so much one drop of poison what it will do why don't you try that and the father do you love all common sense of so one drop of poison or one micro milligram of poison brother i will be dead and gone cyanide i don't have to con you know consume in 100 ml can uh, one micro milligram of cyanide you taste before you could taste it you are dead immediately travels into the blood vessels finished uh, for that you will have common sense because it will take away your life but why not for this common sense and spiritual sense works hand in hand many of the christians in christendom today either they have spiritual sense no common sense <clears throat> common sense no spiritual sense both are needed because why you need to be practical at times but not as a compromiser yeah not instilled in self complacency you're not uh, defining your own standards deviating from the word of god no from bible tells like this but now to this extent you can sin what is this god hates sin that's it verse number 21 for it would have been better for them no uh, not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it it would have been better for you not to be born in the in a christian family or not to be born again as a believer in christ through water baptism through remission of sins through repentance and reconciliation with the father now what your justification is bigger you got to justify what made you to get out of this throne of grace what made you to instill the blood covenant which you had known enough which you had understood enough which you had followed enough but for some reasons you are not able to control the lust of your flesh how are you able to justify how would you be able to justify tell me this and that white throne judgment it, it ultimately it, you know it's all connected to that final destiny and the final event that is going to happen that is going to take place the whole world will be made to stand in front of the father in heaven and he will be seated as king of kings and lord of lords along with this holy son of god jesus christ on his right hand side god is going to judge it would have been far better that you were not born as a christian huh why am i saying this hey people belonging to other traditions other religion other culture and all that having not known bible or having not been allowed to read bible a lot of restrictions in lot of places you know they touch bible they will be killed and you know how many people they still read bible so secretly many the, there is a bible which i know it is uh, it is the size of a finger you can read it with lens many many it is made for secret believers and they are reading with a lens that bible which is only the size of a finger you know pocket bible not even pocket bible it's a secret pocket bible <laughs> brother you what liberty you and i have you and i have been given this beautiful bible how many versions of bible you have at home for that reason i have so many versions of bible but i i stick to kjv nkjv version yeah because why hey in order to finish this nkjv properly i took almost like 27 28 years and i'm still not done it's not that i hate niv bsi and all these things no but there is no time yeah let me do one thing properly at a time and but i do take references like i sometimes consult niv go to uh, even good news bible and then go to bsi and uh, sometimes reference bible yeah uh, there is a dake bible dake right with all additional notes references i i refer i refer you right? know not 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 i uh, know uh, uh, knowledge is good spirit of knowledge god has given that uh, gift you know we need to use that you have resources you understand huh? 
Uh, why am I saying this is you have all these gifts. It would have been far better that you were not born as a Christian versus an unbeliever will be able to easily justify a Lord. I was not able to read Bible fully. Therefore, I was not able to follow certain laws and commandments fully. And you know my situation. I had been reading Bible in the toilet secretly and I hid this. Yeah, I think I remember one testimony. One guy was taking this secret pocket Bible and then he's, he wraps it in a polythene cover and you know, kind of uses that rubber band or something like that. And then he hides it in the commode, the, the olden days commode, right? The fl flush is these days inbuilt. inbuilt. The olden days come out, there is a separate flush tank and they were filled with water, not dirty water, right? He hides it in that. And whenever he goes to the toilet, he picks it up and reads that one verse. That much only time he will have. Otherwise, he will keep knocking the door. And then again, like that, he read the whole Bible, man, once. Wow. Don't you think so? You're not even point one percentage of that wonderful brother who did this. <laughs> and one brother... In, in China, uh, he read the Bible once and they caught him up in the underground church because he was leading a little uh, community, uh, a Christian community, and he was pastoring. You know where they let him? They let him live in a septic tank filled with all human waste for 30 plus years. And there, the Holy Spirit helped him to remember everything that he read. And in that septic tank, he was praying for the world. And yet he lived. He came out alive and he was able to testify. How many examples should I give? Tell me. Uh, you all know it. Google is right in front of you. Please Google out. How many people suffered major things for Christ and you are telling me you don't have time. Uh, my travel is so hectic. My work is so hectic. My wife is a monster and all that. Shame on you. My brother, my sister listening to me. Huh? It's not about shame. Hey, you are endangering your life. You will never be able to look at God, the Father, eyeball to eyeball. Because why? You would have heard all these testimonies. Imagine these two brothers are right in front of you. That toilet brother and septic tank brother. Huh? And they give this, share, share these testimonies. And the whole, uh, you know, angelic host is applauding. And uh, wow, welcome, welcome, welcome. What a passion for Christ and all that. And next is your turn. What would you say? Tell me. You won't even stand there. You will say that, you know, let me not even go and make an effort. To justify, I will straight away jump into the lake of fire. Huh. You don't belong there. My beloved brother, my sister, God loves you. He made you wonderfully and fearfully. Why? To jump into the lake of fire? It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it. To turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. Many people are biased by this teaching. Hey, you don't have to follow all the commandments and laws. You know, it's a, it's, it's, it's not an and, it's an, it's or, right? Something like do not lust or do not steal or no, no, no. Do not lust and do not steal and do not dishonor your father and mother and do not, uh, you know, be an idolater and, and, and. It's not or. It's not a multiple choice question that you make one choice and ah, I stick to it. Do not uh, take bribes. I love that. Therefore, I stick to it. Therefore, I can go to heaven. Cult preaching, man. Where are you discovering such teachings? Tell me. All 613 commandments and laws in the old covenant and 1050 laws and commandments in the new covenant, you and I will have to fulfill it. And it's not at all an uphill task. It's very, very easy. The basic is... I mean, the basics of all this, what is the uh, prime law or prime commandment? You know, right? Jesus spoke about two things. Do love the Lord God with all your heart, mind and soul. Matthew 20 to 37, Matthew 20 to 39. Love your neighbor as yourself. Everything else is encompassed. If you're able to do this, you know, you keep on practicing, you will fall down. You will make mistakes. You will make errors. You will be defeated. You will be failing. But through it all, the Holy Spirit is going to help you adding all the subsidiary commandments and laws, the supplements, uh, then you are able to fulfill the prime law and commandment. Uh, Jesus is brilliant. You, somebody wants to teach Jesus some brilliance and wisdom. Uh, <laughs> he's God of wisdom and brilliance. If Jesus says these two things you are able to follow, you are going to heaven, which means all the remaining 1668, whatever, command, 63 commandments are all encompassed within that. Else you will not be able to fulfill these two. Brilliant Jesus. That's why I love him. I love him so much. That's why I go to him.
lastly verse number 22 but it has happened to them according to the true proverb you know who who are these them referring to unbelievers huh? heathens huh? atheists no believers in christ especially born again believers spirit filled believers in church yeah talking about you and me true proverb what is it a dog returns to its to his own vomit have you seen that i've witnessed it many times a dog vomiting it will go on for one round and come back and eat its own vomit why that animal is created for cleaning purpose it will eat human waste like pig only yeah pet dogs whoever they train at home yeah its behavior is a little different but you allow that pet dog to chill along with its day original attitude <laughs> the original inbuilt dna behavior will come out <laughs> <laughs> that's why you should not gel along with stray dogs and stray dogs are nothing but the demons and the demonic forces and people who embrace worldly pleasures do not count them as your enemy they are human beings they are mankind created by god they are our brothers and sisters right i'm not comparing you know unbelievers to stray dogs i'm just taking as an example huh? sorry i didn't mean that way but what i'm trying to tell you is that their behavior is like a stray behavior ha huh? gone astray away from god you don't have to linger to that but if you linger all that will you know that is called as being led into the temptation a pet dog you just allow it to move along with strays two three days it will pick every habit that a stray dog has stray dog moves around no nobody is there to control question discipline uh, or yell at a stray dog hey doggy come here and all that but the same doggy you give a nice bath and you take care of it at home two three days the behavior changes topples from a worse state to a, to the, to the best state uh, that you are able to transform that's called as being born again why did i take dog example i did not take bible took therefore i'm explaining uh, did i take a dog example versus human being no god is using that example comparing the mankind with the dog some people are like dogs pet dog always running under the shadow of his wings and all that suddenly mingling with the stress then you return to your vomit and uh, vomit again nonsense can you even think of it <clears throat> once i was arguing with somebody not arguing actually i was explaining the person was talking to me um oh this is lost days one we should we should all stay at home no church concept then i asked hey if you're dead where are you going to bury you uh, let corporation people come and take me and throw me into the ditch i don't care i said see then she also showed that uh, verse saying that uh, jesus told no what they can do your dead body is matthew 6 or 7 in matthew, matthew chapter 6 or 7 and something like that and then uh, i said fine but you know to whom it is written it's written for the blood witnesses right if god called you to even lay down your life for him what they can do to your bodies that's what he meant but it doesn't mean that you should stay away from church fellowship i just asked a crazy question to just test her attitude likewise the situation got little more fierce and i also got little aggressive when it's come, when, when it's about the word of god and god and the truth i'll go to any extent to fight i will not argue but at some point i said okay you are the winner fine and the lady got all worked up and she said no i'm not a dog like you to return to its own vomit i felt very very hurt and that night holy spirit reminded me hey you're hurt for this one huh? imagine the son of god is going to be called as the you know king of the dev demons and how can you imagine what what uh, what uh, i would say uh, what what ha- what would have happened to the emotions jesus emotions you think he never got hurt no he definitely got hurt but he did not alert back at them hey it's okay whatever you want to uh, call me call me but no don't raise your little finger against the holy spirit who's going to come after me a dog returns to his own vomit and the so having washed to her bellowing in the mirror yeah the second example is okay but the first one is terrible you know what you had left the sins of the past if you are going back to the sins of the past you have done three four three or four things terrible crime which you can never rectify you have insulted the blood covenant you have insulted the throne of grace you have insulted the spirit of god that is holy spirit and number four you have denied father's love saying i don't need you anymore hebrews 10:29 john 3:36 psalm 139 for this reason god will not hold his anger forever this is the wrath of god shall descend on you because you insulted his son i hope today's session was very useful 
brothers sisters we are not preaching this that you should uh, applaud and appreciate ah this was well taught well preached and all that it's not about me getting your applause right of course you don't uh, you don't hear these kind of detailed teachings in the christendom i'm very very proud of this ministry uh, all glory to the name of jesus and to my dear and to my dear holy spirit who's my teacher right it, it is the voice of the holy spirit you are hearing not proud about me i'm proud of the ministry that god had kicked off through me that's all all glory to him but it's not about it it's about you should your life should change you should be transformed let there be renewal of mind bible says in romans 12 1 and 2 god bless heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship lord thank you so much for uh, uh, the, 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 these uh, messages that you are leading us into awareness you are trying your best to you know help us therefore we are not a we we are not going to fall into deception in the last days deceptions are overwhelming at across every corner oh lord help my brother help my sister whatever decisions they have taken may they stick to it and holy spirit help them lord deliver them in jesus name we pray god bless you subscribe to our channel please do not miss on any videos share with as many as people you can these videos that you are listening right lead others into the life of salvation that's your important duty continue to remember me and our ministries in your personal prayers God bless take care and see you soon